Hi, I'm Wolf McNally, lead researcher for Blockchain Commons. In this video, I'm going to take you through a tour of how the content of Gordian envelopes can be compared, also called diffing. Comparing two structures like text strings for the minimum number of changes necessary to convert one to the other is called the edit distance problem. Frequently, some changes have been made to a file to produce a new version, and we wish to highlight or work with these changes. The Unix diff command and version control tools like git are used to compare two files, the source and target, and produce a set of changes or edits that can be applied to the source to reproduce the target. The reference implementation for Gordian envelopes contains an implementation of diffing specifically for envelopes. This implementation uses the Zhang Shasha ordered tree edit distance algorithm to produce a minimal set of edits needed to transform one envelope into the other. To do this, we need to understand what it means to compare two envelopes, as there are two distinct ways to do this. Envelopes contain trees of data. Each node in the tree produces a digest that serves to uniquely identify its content. We're only showing the first four bytes of the digest here, but it's actually 32 bytes internally. It's important to remember that every node in an envelope's tree is itself a complete envelope that could be extracted and stand on its own. But changing the content of any node even a little bit entirely changes the computed digests of all its parents back to the root. On the right, is the same envelope after some of its assertions have been elided. Elision is a very powerful feature of Gordian envelopes that allow anyone to remove content from an envelope while still leaving a marker as to what has been removed. This can be done for purposes of redaction or compression or referencing information in envelopes that can be found elsewhere. As you can see, both the unelided and elided versions of this envelope have the same top-level digest. Envelope supports two operations, elision and encryption, that preserve the digest tree. This works because the elided or encrypted nodes declare the same digest. Here you can see that the assertion on the left has the same digest as its elided form on the right. This keeps all the ancestor node digests the same. So if two envelopes' top-level digests are equal, it means that the two envelopes would contain the same information in their unelided or unencrypted forms. This is semantic equivalence. Clearly, while these two envelopes are semantically equivalent, they are not exactly identical. They look different because they are different. When comparing an envelope for structural identicality, exactly one envelope passes this test, and that is the envelope itself. This form of comparison is structural identicality. And this is what we care about when we're diffing envelopes. What we're trying to find is the minimal set of edits that when applied to the first envelope results in the second. Let's switch to a simpler example. Here we have an envelope with a subject and a single assertion. Because we're discussing diffing, we only care about structural identicality. So we're showing them in a simplified tree format that doesn't show digests or certain other housekeeping nodes. As you can see, only one thing needs to change to transform the first envelope into the second. The content of the subject needs to change from Alice to Carol. When we ask the reference implementation to compare the first envelope to the second, it returns a new envelope containing the edits needed. This envelope is a bare assertion with the predicate edits and the object as a CBOR array. The contents of the array are primarily used by the algorithm that applies the edits to the first envelope to transform it into the second, but if you're curious, the first array element is a 1, which is a version number, followed by an array with an element for each edit. There is only one edit here, and the 3 is the position of the node that's going to be renamed. And the innermost array is the new label for the node. The 0 says that this is a CBOR value, and the value itself is the string carol. The nice thing about edits being envelopes themselves is that you can do all the things with them that you can do with any envelope, including interrogate its structure, elide parts of it, encrypt it, sign it, enclose it inside other envelopes, and so on. Okay, let's do a bit more complex example. Here we have an envelope with assertions about who Alice knows, and we've already got an assertion that's been encrypted. So unless we get the symmetric key it was encoded with, or the envelope whose digest matches, we have no idea what that assertion says. We're going to do a number of transformations on the envelope. 
We're going to rename one of the assertion objects to Frank. We're going to elide another assertion. We're going to wrap the entire envelope and add a signature to the wrapped envelope. Then we are going to ask for the edits that transform the first envelope into the second. Obviously, the edits are more complex this time. The version number one is the same. Briefly, the next three numbers, five, four, and three, are positions to delete, followed by the next four lines, starting with 10, one, seven, and eight, which are positions to rename, and the last two lines, 21 and 22, are positions to insert. Inserting requires the most housekeeping information because some of the nodes at that position may end up as children of the inserted node. Of course, the example I just showed you is part of the unit tests in our reference implementation, and you can also try it out from the Unix command line using our envelope CLI tool. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to hearing your questions and ideas.